Hi again, everybody, and welcome to the podcast, Love Letters to Pam, or you may be watching on the YouTube channel, Traveling with Jack and Pam, and as always, we appreciate the support. This will be a rather short message, but one that I think is very, very important. You hear people often say that if you're still here on this earth, you've still got purpose. If you're a believer like me, that purpose means that God's going to use you, sometimes in some very amazing ways and very unexpected ways. And of course, I've shared my stories from time to time, how it seems to happen to me, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes a weekly basis, sometimes it's only three or four times a month. But rest assured, as I stand here or sit here right now, and as I'm breathing and alive, God still shows me every day that there is purpose to my life. And there's purpose to your life. As difficult as your grief and loss circumstances are, you are still here with some purpose and reason for being here. Some days it's a little unclear, and I know that, but other days it becomes abundantly clear. And today was one of those days that it became abundantly clear to me what my purpose was on this day. First of all, it had been a rather long week of travel. I'd gone through flight delays, flight cancellations, and what was a 16, 17-day work trip turned into a day 18, 19-day work trip. And it really threw my whole algorithm or body rhythm off. I had to adjust back to a Western time zone from being and working in both the Eastern and Central time zones. I had trouble sleeping because I got in so doggone uh, early in the morning after being up all night, not wanting to miss my early morning flight. You know what I'm saying, you're just out of sync. And then I'm here in Arizona where the temperature's been about 115 degrees every day for the last two weeks. And I always talk about the dry heat doesn't bother me and it really doesn't. But when you're out in this heat, it just kind of does something to the body and you feel off. So I'd been a little off all week long as we were heading towards the weekend. Well, on this Friday, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go out and have a nice lunch. So I went out to the Scottsdale Airport which uh, this is a beautiful facility there. You gotta remember, uh, it's kinda like watching Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous in motion as Learjet after Learjet land and depart from the Scottsdale Airport. But on site, they also have a beautiful restaurant with floor to glass, or floor to ceiling glass windows. On a cooler day, they've got a beautiful patio. All of it is overlooking the airfield and the mountains off in the distance. It's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous view. And to make matters even better, the food's actually very, very good as well and reasonably priced. A lot of people in the general public, not the aviation, uh, not necessarily just aviation people, go there for lunch. They've also got dinner and things like that. So I thought, yeah, I'm going there. And I did. I had a nice table, table for two, but of course just one sitting there but as I've talked about before, I can do lunch out okay, because you see a lot of other people doing lunch on their own. Dinner, that's another story. But anyway, I had a really, really good lunch. Everything was cooked to perfection. And then as I left the restaurant, you go out a hallway from the restaurant to kind of a lobby area that's really part of the airport, but it's also where what you might call the hostess stand or the maitre d' stand sits there at the entrance to the restaurant. And there was a young woman there and she was folding napkins. And she said, uh, as I went out, I said, you know, I said, the lunch here was absolutely fantastic. And she goes, oh yeah, she says, I know it is. She says, even when I'm back in the back working the line, she says, I watch the chefs, I see what they're doing. It is all the highest quality and unless it's perfect, they don't let it go out of the kitchen. And I told her too, I said, I'd uh, met the, the manager there and I said she's delightful and I said she made sure that everything came off without a hitch and then for some reason we got into a discussion briefly about where we were from and family and one thing led to another next thing you know she now knows that I'm a widower of three plus years and she then shares with me that she knows what that's like because she lost her mom about seven or eight months ago we started talking a little more. It ends up her mom, my wife Pam, almost the exact same experiences in what led to eventually them both being called to heaven. Almost identical. Her dad left behind along with her being the daughter and then also a special needs brother. 
Uh, she is here now, the young woman is here to go to university. And we talked a little bit about the struggles of grief and loss. And it was ended up being a really deep conversation. We probably talked for 15 minutes or so. I then talked to her a little bit about her faith and her faith has been challenged to the core. And she's wavering. And I told her, I said, I get that. I said, I bet you're like me in your mom's final months. We pray and we pray and we pray for healing and then it doesn't come. And we kind of get angry about that, don't we? She says, yes. So I understood that. And it was another comment made. She goes, I'm okay. And I said, no, you're not okay. And she goes, yeah, I'm not okay. And I said, you know, it's okay to not be okay. Once again, we were connecting on such a different level. We talked about how until you really understand, until you've really walked in those shoes of someone that's lost somebody close, I mean really, really close, in this case her mother, in my case my wife, my kids, it was their mother of course, and we talked about how people can say they understand but they really don't until they've been there. We talked a little bit about her dad and the struggles that he's facing, and of course he's still helping take care of her special needs brother. And it was just a really, really good and sweet time. And I was also very careful on the, on the faith front to not challenge her about her faith, to not be judgmental and say, how can you not believe in God anymore? How can you lose? No, that's not the way you do this. She's got to work this out in her own time. And again, because I've been there, done that, I understood and we had just a great understanding of one another. And again, it proved to me that if I'm still here on this earth, I'm still breathing, I'm still out there, that I've got purpose. And my purpose today, well, God used me to meet the young woman who was working at the hostess stand at the beautiful restaurant at the Scottsdale Airport. And yeah, I gave her my card with my number and I told her, I said, if you ever just need somebody to talk to. I said, you're, you're, you're here alone going to college because she's from Texas, actually. And, you know, I'm here by myself, too. I said, you call me. I said, I don't care what time of day it is. I said, if you just want me to meet you at a coffee shop over near campus or whatever, you just need to, to, to vent, to just share with somebody, do that. I may or may not ever hear from her again. But for that few minutes today, two people going through walks of grief, connected. And you know, God used her too. She may not realize that, but God used her too. He placed her in my path. So it's been a good day. And I hope you have a good day and a better tomorrow. Bye now.